Welcome to Cute Widgets and More. Have you ever had that feeling that you found a bug and it turned out to be a feature you just didn't understand? Well, in today's episode, I'll tell you about a feature I found in Cute Creator. So the feature that I found was relating to replace symbol, that is pressing Control Shift R on a symbol to replace or rename that symbol throughout your code base. And it was relating to searching for symbols, but it's much easier explained by simply looking at how does it behave in my current Qt Creator. So over here, I have Remove Row, Control Shift R to replace symbols. But if you look at what came up down here, uh, it only suggests me Remove Row, and it's not even selected to be replaced. And it's the one from demo.h, but wait, wait, that remove row is also in my CPP file. Why didn't it suggest that one? Okay, let's try and replace over here, Control Shift R again. This time it does suggest all the four, whoops, all the, all the occurrences in my CPP file, but not uh, the one in my header file. That's peculiar. Okay. Let me also show you the other one that didn't work out. Control Shift F for find. I'm now searching for remove row in the project reverse rows proxy. You can see I got a few projects open over here. So I just want to look at that in, in that particular project. The pattern is this and search. And now it found four occurrences. Well, it is uh, the same that we saw before, but still only in the CPP file. Was I losing my mind? Maybe. Let's go and have a look. I have a Qt Creator version 5. That's one that was shipped with Qt 6.2 up here. And let's see if I do Control Shift R. Now I see both the H and the CPP file. Over in my H file, I see my H and CPP file. Search for remove row, row. And I see both my H and my CPP file. So I wasn't losing my mind. It was clearly a regression of some kind. It's always nice to know that I'm not insane. Well, of course, that's not a proof that I ain't. But I filed a bug report about this and it didn't take long before I got an answer saying, that's not a bug, that's a feature. You should add your header files to your CMake file. Like, why? And they pointed out that they had mentioned that in the uh, release note of Qt Creator 6. So let's see that release note. Qt Creator 6 released. Rolling down, there is a beautiful animation of some new editing feature. I'll show you the, that particular thing at the end of this video here. But further down projects, we added, we added for CMake projects, we removed the special header notes and in turn improved the way CMake support handles header files mentioned in target sources. Okay, so this is about at the sidebar where you have your projects and whatnot, there you can see your headers and they remove something. That's cool. The preferred way, let me just try and highlight here. The preferred way is to add headers to target sources, which, could, which helps Qt Creator and other tools like Lazy to do the right thing. Okay, cool enough. That's the preferred way, but it didn't really mention that that will break my workflow. I don't know if you understood that sentence as you must add your header files to your source list and see make otherwise uh, find and replace will not work anymore. At least I didn't read it that way. And when I finally found the solution and I told people in KDAP, uh, a lot of them said, oh, that explains. And uh, so sorry, cute company, that wasn't the smoothest ride. But hey, I'm here to help. Uh, and hopefully this episode will shed some light on it. Let's see in the code we had before that it actually works with that change. So over here in our in our broken Qt Creator, well, just go and check that it's actually the broken one we have here. You can see it did not select this one. Over in our broken Qt Creator, the demo.h, if we add that, demo.h, and save it. And you can see down here that the general message are blinking because now it ran Qt Creator for me. It ran CMake for me. Uh, and go over here again, Control R, and now it finds both of those. We can also Control F and remove, we need to be in this one here, 
and search and it found it in both places and actually if we go back over here and see the there was this uh, files in all projects directory it doesn't say all files in project but all files in all projects directory the old projects the old the old the files from all projects we have that one up there but this is files in all projects directory and what this one says is that in those directories that you claim to be project directories we will look in all the files and if i use that one uh, then you can see that now it find both of them of course i'm in the non-broken version now so it but trust me will you in the cmake file you saw that I added the header file, but you might also have noticed that the .ui file was there in the add library. And um, that is a, a nice feature. And actually, uh, if you are using uh, CMake, which you hopefully are, and you add a new file, for example, a new, new uh, form project, whatever it's called, the one with a UI file in, then you will notice that it will not update your CMake file. And well, that's uh, just how it is. But what it'll do is that it, on the clipboard, it will it will add the .h and .cpp and the .ui file, so you can paste it right into your add library. And that should be, be good enough most of the time. But actually, if you are using uh, Windows and if you are using Ninja on Windows, be careful because uh, at least until recently, there was a bug. Uh, I'll, I'll add a link to the bug report below. Uh, there was a bug which meant that you had to run Ninja twice to get changes from the UI file built into your binary. And uh, that's just a super, super annoying. So if you're using Windows and you're using Ninja, do not add that there, but instead use the old mechanism. And let me just switch my keyboard here so I can see it on my screen. It says cute underscore wrap underscore UI. Uh, that's the old mechanism where you add it in, in you add the UI files in a separate part of your CMake file. Again, there will be a link below showing you that mechanism. So I needed to add the .h files to my CMake files, which wasn't entirely trivial because there was a lot of different uh, targets in there. There was the general sources. There was the if I had that feature, then include those CPP files. There was the plug-in targets and so on. So it wasn't just a matter of just doing a grep and then add them all. Uh, so I wrote a small script to do this. And I wrote another small script to check if I had forgotten some, which I had. So uh, I'll share those scripts with you. They are absolutely not rocket science, but at least it will help you uh, avoid spending three hours to, to write those scripts yourself. So the first script, this update cmake files.sh is relatively simple. It simply searches for all of my cmake list.txt files. And for each of them, it runs this beautiful Perl script here uh, that um, you might or might not know the Perl script. It searches for anything with blah blah.cpp, and then it replaces that with blah blah.cpp and blah blah.h. And uh, I can go over here and run that script now, and you can see that it. Uh, did update all of these files here. I can even do a git diff on the cmake list.txt that I had here. And the very first thing you can see that didn't go out very well because what it changed here is that it actually changed a, um, a, a macro or a, a command, custom command that I had in here, which was likely not what I wanted. But on the other hand, down here, further down, further down, you can see that it actually that did add the .h files to all of my files. So that part was okay. And it, it, it's not a 100% bulletproof solution because I just need to do it once. So I went in and I updated it, but it only did that for those where I had a CPP file. I also did have some freestanding uh, uh, H files without anything. So uh, uh, .h file, constants .h, for example, there wasn't a constants .cpp, so that wouldn't be updated up here. So I needed to find those two, so I wrote this script here. And uh, well, that's a lot of stuff here. Let's just uh, digest it. It's running, it's finding all the cmake files .txt directories. Then it goes into those directories each, and then it runs and find all the header files, and remember that in files. It grabs uh, through the cmake list files, and for anything saying something that is different from a space .h, and what it will find there is uh, files with 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 
or stuff.incident.h, that's likely my header files. Um, and it's a backslash dot because, well, I want a dot, not just any character. Gotta love regular expressions. Minus minus only matching means that it won't show you the whole line. It will only show the thing that was matched in this regular expression. And now it takes all my files and it echoes those and sends that for a grep minus inverse word match. That's the minus V usually uh, that removes from this list of files all those files that was found in the header files. And hopefully that will give me the right set. So let's see if we can find that find on reference.sh. So over here again, find on reference and it will print out, it'll, it'll go into lots and lots of directories. But if we scroll up here, I see a third party and up here is my third party again, because it, 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 it could have had um, files that was several directory deep that I was referring. And again, it, it, it just needed to do a good enough job so I could get it cut and pasted over. And here you can see, I actually have my, my enum helper, my lazy value. Uh, we've been talking about those in previous episodes. And uh, I got a bunch of things that do not have a, 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 a CPP file next to it. So those I needed to cut and paste into the right places. So my camera crew tells me I got two more minutes before this video is too long. So uh, I'll show you that other feature that was released with Qt Creator 6, namely the facility of multi-cursor. The, the, the feature that you saw in the video in the release note, it takes a bit to appreciate the feature fully. So let me show you how it works. So the feature or the new feature is an extension of block editing that we've seen in previous episode that you can do usual selection with shift and then whatever here. But if I press shift out, then I go into this block editing mode and I can do, for example, add stuff here if I want to. What undo here? The new feature is that I can go straight into this one. Well, I could do that before. I can do stuff here like this, but the difference to previous was when I did movement with my cursor, I would go back to being a single cursor. Now I'm, I'm actually three cursors, but with Qt Creator 6, it stays this. So one thing I can do now that I couldn't do before is that I can actually make this stuff be in a global include like this. And the part that I couldn't do before is that go to the end of the file. See, I have three cursors standing there at the end of the file and I can edit like this. That's actually, pretty, pretty neat. Let me show you another thing that we do. If I can just uh, find the QD box down here, I might want to do uh, not like this. I always confuse control shift and L shift in my fingers, but it's L shift. There we are. Like this, I got these and I, I might want to say to add something to those and I can, let me see. I hope that I can do now else and then press down here. Now I have four cursors and I can go like, whatever I, I, I want to do. Uh, I can get four, five cursors there. One thing I can't do though, is that I cannot go and say, okay, um, let me just select further. So let's just go back here again. I, I, now I click somewhere else to get one cursor only again. So now I have here else shift and I got these. What I would like to do was to be able to say, okay, let me go down here and then else shift and press down, but observe how all four cursors are moving. It, it did look like it was going well, but actually, uh, no, it is, uh, it's actually going the wrong way because now I'm actually moving the cursors while I add cursors, uh, a small feature request, please. Um, but it is, uh, it is indeed very useful to have these cursors. And it's one of those things that from time to time you get slightly confused when you've done stuff like this, and then you are still in a previous mindset and cute create a six and you say, okay, now I just want to go up here and edit something, but you still have all three because the movement is around. And as we started this episode, that's a feature, not a bug, damn it. So you need to click outside to stop being multi cursor input, but that's cool. And one final thing, if you're on Linux and you're using KDE, which seems like a good thing to do on Linux, then the outs, selection here might not even work for you because at least my default uh, KD setup meant that else and left moves windows around. You can rebind that to be windows key and 
and left, which I've done so that I have this feature here now. It'll be a few more months before the Alt click to move windows around will go out of my fingers, but uh, I will get there, I'm sure. That's it for this episode of Cute Widgets and more. But do remember in the future to add the header files, not just those that you have now, but also when you add new CPP files, do get your header files in there because otherwise you will end up in a state where your search and replace works for most of your files, but just not those. Uh, fortunately, when you add new files, you get the, the, the CPP and the .h file on your, keep, uh, on your clipboard to add to your CMake right away. So hopefully we'll not get there, but be careful out there. It is a dangerous world. Until next time, have a great time.